Hi, uh, welcome back. Uh, in this video series, what I want to discuss is I want to discuss uh, relationships in a Y circuit for balanced load. So we're going to call this balanced Y relationships. Oh, spelling's a little off. So balanced Y relationships, what we're going to kind of get into is talking about what happens when I have a balanced load on a Y source. So three phase balanced load. Now, first I want to break down into this word balanced. Well, in order to be a balanced load, that means each phase, each phase will have the same power factor. Right, so if it's a resistor, it'll be one. If it's a pure capacitor, it'll be zero. Uh, right, the same power factor. If it's lagging, they're all lagging by the exact same. And the same Z or the same impedance within each phase. Now, those are the two criteria I have to meet in order to be uh, considered a balanced three phase Y load. I have to be the same power factor in each phase and I have to have the same impedance in each phase. I need to meet both of those criteria, right? So what I wanna discuss in this video is we're gonna kind of break it down into three parts. I'm gonna discuss uh, balanced uh, resistive circuit. I'm gonna discuss a balanced uh, pure capacitive circuit. And I'm gonna discuss a balanced uh, inductive circuit, but we're going to talk about real world inductors where they have a resistive component and an inductive component. So those would be considered just lagging circuits, right? So those are kind of the three I'm going to discuss in this uh, big bit long video. Uh, you can use the uh, index down here right below me to kind of skip to whatever part you're looking for. Uh, also, make sure you check out the rest of my Y videos, which are linked down below to kind of cover all of the calculations and relationships within a three phase Y circuit. Thanks for watching. Stick around. So what we're going to kind of discuss here in this video or this portion of this video is uh, the phase relationships in a balanced resistive Y load. So what I'm talking about is I've got a resistive load. here, right? I connect up my, you know, line one, my line two, and my line three, right? And again, what I'm, we're talking about specifically is a balanced load. So in each of these resistors, my R is the same, is equal to one another. And because it is R, my power factor is one, All right? So it doesn't matter what ohmic value we use or what voltage or what current we use. We're not talking about numbers here. We're just talking about the relationships. So looking at this and looking at my phasor diagram, right? We know that our phase voltages are gonna appear on this phasor diagram. So our phase voltages, we would see V a to N, VB to N, and VC to N. I mean, obviously they would look a lot nicer if I were to use a protractor and a ruler, but this is all just for conversation's sake. Now, the way I always approach my phasor diagrams is I do my phase voltages, then I do my currents, and then I go back with my line voltages for Y, just so it doesn't get too cluttered. So. What I want to think about is the relationship here. So we're talking, let's talk about phase A first. So that's from A, right? This would be phase A here. So phase A to neutral is my voltage is here at zero. Now the relationship between voltage and current through for a resistor is that they are what we call in phase with each other, right? Voltage and current are in phase with each other for a resistive load. Now what that also means is that the phase angle 
is zero degrees, right? And we know our power factor is one. So when I'm looking at this resistive load in phase A, I know that the current is gonna be here in phase with the voltage. So that's I A, all right? Now we can kind of do the same thing with all three of them. So here was phase B. On this particular circuit, well, phase B, the current is going to be in phase with the voltage. So what that means is down here, my current is I B in phase with that voltage. And then finally, we come to phase C, where we're going to see the exact same relationship, the current flowing through phase C is going to be in phase with the voltage across phase C. Not the line voltage, but the phase voltage. My phase voltage is here, VC to N. That means my current is going to be right there, I C. So that's our current and our phase relationship. Last step is I'm going to throw my line voltages onto this diagram. Now I always remember my line voltages line voltage is root three larger than phase voltage and line voltage leads phase voltage by 30 degrees. So that's going to be somewhere like, can you, I don't know if you can see that. There you go. V A to B. V B to C. And again, not to scale at all here. And V B to C. This one up here was actually V C to A. All right, so that's kind of what your phasor diagram would look like for a purely resistive, balanced three phase load. Now, the big thing with that three phase balanced load, or the nice thing, is that because everything is balanced, there is no current going to be flowing on that neutral conductor. So when it's in a balanced load, we're not gonna see any current flowing back on that neutral. Um, so that's just those relationships. Thanks for watching. Um, you can check out other parts as well. I'm gonna discuss a balanced lagging load as well as a balanced capacitive load. Uh, and I have a couple other videos with calculations as well. Have All right, so welcome back. Um, what I wanna discuss now is, again, we're gonna, I'm talking about a balanced three phase Y load, right? And we know that in order to have a balanced load, we have to meet two criteria. We need the same impedance in each phase and we need the same power factor in each phase. So the load in particular I wanna talk about right now, I'm gonna talk about a three phase capacitive load. And I'm gonna say that each one of these capacitors has the same XC value, or the same capacitance, so the same XC, which gives me the same current through each one. And of course, because they're capacitors, they all have the same power factor, right? With capacitors, our power factor is gonna equal zero. And we could say with that, our phase angle for a capacitor, oh, phase angle is a 90 degree lead. Right, and again, that meaning our current is leading our voltage in each phase. So here they are. I'm gonna connect them all up. One, two, three. So over here I have my Y source. Here I have my Y load. Connect them all up. And then there's a neutral conductor as well, which we'll talk about that at the end. But, uh, so in this case, you know, maybe let's call this uh, phase A phase B, and phase C. And let's talk about the relationship. Now, when we're discussing relationships, it's important to start with talking about each phase individually. So I wanna talk about the phase A capacitor. Well, the phase A capacitor, the current leads the phase A voltage by 90 degrees. So I jump over into my phasor diagram, which I've already plotted my phase currents and my phase voltages and my line voltages. So now I'm a capacitor and I'm in phase A. In phase A, the current leads the voltage by 90 degrees, which means my current is gonna be up here. 
That would be I in phase A. Leading by 90 degrees. We would see the exact same relationship in phase B. The current in phase B leads the voltage in phase B by 90 degrees. So if here's my voltage in phase B, my current leads by 90, putting it right here. VI B. And then we see the exact same thing in phase C, where in phase C, my current through phase C leads the voltage by 90 degrees. So that's going to put it right here, I, C. Now, you could do the math for this as well, and we're going to do that real quick. We know that volts in phase A are at zero degrees. So VAN, and I should have put this on here, is at zero degrees. That means that IA is at 90 degrees. Okay. We see VBN, we know that's at 240 degrees, which would mean that IB, 90 degree lead, would be at 330 degrees. Our phase C voltage is always at 120, or in this case is at 120, which a 90 degree lead would put the current at 210 degrees. So that's what we would see with those relationships uh, between voltage and current in the phase. And then of course, our line voltages, we know our line voltage leads our phase voltage by 30 degrees. So we can see VAB leading VAN by 30, CA leads CN by 30, and BC leads BN by 30 degrees. Uh, so I hope that helps clear up the phase relationship in a balanced, purely capacitive circuit. Um, all right, welcome to my video here. Um, in this video or portion of video, I want to discuss um, a three-phase, Y-connected, balanced motor. So the nice thing, we, we, we know a motor is a balanced load, and we know a motor is a lagging load because of the inductance within the motor causing current to lag voltage a motor is a lagging voltage now in each phase of a motor there's a resistive component and an inductive component but the impedance in each phase is going to be equal All right so when we connect up this motor to line one, line two, line three. Each phase of the motor sees the same voltage, each phase of the motor has the same impedance, and each phase of the motor has the same power factor. So that's great because to us that means that that is a balanced load, which means that our neutral conductor, if we even have one, which we probably don't for a motor, would carry no current. There is no unbalanced load on this motor. So let's, we, we need a number for our example. So let's say that this is a power factor of 0 0.866, which gives us a phase angle of 30 degree lag. So this motor has a 30 degree lagging power factor. So I wanna talk about what that means. So I've already got my phaser diagram over here with my phase voltages and my line voltages all plotted out. Now, when we're dealing with current in the Y circuit, we always wanna kinda of talk about, you know, well, I know my line current here is equal to my phase current. There's only that one path for current to flow. But when I'm doing calculations, if I'm going, you know, I equals E over Z, you know, if I'm solving for current and I'm going V over impedance, it's always the phase voltage and the phase impedance, right? So it's V of the phase and Z of the phase. And it gives me current of the phase, which in a Y circuit, we know phase current and line current are the same. But based off of that, that means that all of my phasers for current 
are going to be phasers. They're going to be about the phase based off of that phase voltage. So talking about line A or phase A, so let's pretend this one here is phase A. My current flowing through it is going to be lagging the voltage across it by 30 degrees. So if my voltage is here at zero, right, which maybe I'll punch the, well, you guys know, our voltage of A to N is at 100, or at zero degrees, at zero degrees, we know that our current is lagging that by 30 degrees. So let's put that current is actually going to be down here, I, A, lagging by 30 degrees, which is going to put it at 330 degrees. Now let's talk about phase B. We see the same relationship in phase B. We're going to take the voltage of phase B divided by the impedance of phase B, and it's going to be give us our current, and that current is going to be lagging by 30 degrees. So if our B phase voltage is here, which we know it's at 240 degrees, then that would put our current lagging that by 30. So our current would be here, IB will be at 210 degrees, All right? That takes us to the last one, which is phase C. Now the voltage for phase C is up here at 120 degrees. Our current is lagging that voltage by 30 degrees. So we go 120 minus 30 gives us 90. So that means our IC is going to be here at 90 degrees. Kind of like that. So that's kind of what you'd see as our phase relationships between phase voltage and phase current. And then we can also see on this phaser diagram our line voltages. Uh, so I hope that helps. Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you've been watching the whole video, then we kind of just covered uh, all of the different portions. Uh, we covered a resistive, a capacitive, and now an inductive. Uh, and I really appreciate you sticking around. Uh, have a great day, and please don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button.